Hello everyone and welcome to Digital Ocean School. My name is Ellie and for the next 15 weeks I am going to be delivering the best bits of our Ocean School and Plastic Free Schools programmes live on our social media channels. So you might have seen us on Tuesday for the Rocky Shore lesson um, and it was fantastic to speak to you guys about the insanely cool habitats that are all over the UK on our rocky shorelines. Today we are going to be doing a rocky shore quiz and you don't have to have been in lesson one to take part of this. All you need is a pen and a paper. This quiz is going to last until about 12 o'clock so you can have this on in your kitchen, in your bedroom, if you're working from home, if you're in school, just have it on in the background and we can go through this quiz together. Okay, so I just want to, while you're finding your pens and your paper, chat to you a little bit more about Ocean School, Digital Ocean School. For the next 15 weeks, we will have a different topic every week for you guys to take part in at home. And you can use our resources whenever you want. We are uploading them to the Surfers Against Sewage website straight after our live streams. So you just need to head to sas.org.uk go to the education pages and click on a link called Digital Ocean School. So you can find our Rocky Shore resources on there and you'll be able to find this quiz on there as soon as we are finished on this live stream as well. Okay, now I can see you all in the comments and I'm gonna be asking you to interact with me during this live stream. So if you are ready, you can put a thumbs up and I will explain how this quiz is going to work. Now, there are only three rounds to this quiz, so it, it's quite a quick quiz and I'm going to be revealing the answers to each round after we have done the whole round. So what I would like you guys to do, if you can, is just write your answers down on your paper and then when we're revealing the answers you can then type them in and we can chat about them together. Does this sound good? Thumbs up if it does. Okay, awesome, nice one. So, the Rocky Shore Quiz to begin with is going to have a what am I round and in this round I am going to be describing things that you can expect to find along the rocky shoreline of the UK and I want you guys to tell me what that thing is. So as I just mentioned write it down on your paper and we will go through the answers together at the end. You will have 10 seconds to answer each question and you will hear this noise when we will be answering. Okay, so the what am I round? Question number one. We're going to get started straight away. Question number one is I am 95% water, I have no brain and no blood. What am I? I am 95% water, I have no brain and no blood. What am I? Okay, amazing. So we're going to move on to question number two. This is a what am I round and I want you to write down your answer and we will go through them together after this round is over. So question number two. My eyes are on the ends of my arms. My eyes are on the ends of my arms. What am I? Okay, fantastic. So, question number three. Now, these are all things that you find on the rocky shoreline of the UK. So, Stan, your answer did, did make me laugh, but I don't think we will find him on the rocky shoreline of the UK. These are all creatures. So, question number three in the what am I round. I have up to ten legs. Ten legs. I have an exoskeleton, and this means that unlike us, my skeleton is outside of my body and I am famous for walking sideways. What am I? So I have up to 10 legs, I have an exoskeleton, 
and I am famous for walking sideways. What am I? Okay, amazing. Well done, guys. So, thumbs up if you're ready for question number four. We're speeding through these, but I'm excited already to hear your answers. So, question number four in the what am I round. I am a fish capable of living out of the water for several hours. What am I? I am a fish capable of living out of the water for several hours. What am I? Am I? Okay, amazing. Well done, guys. So, thumbs up if you're ready for question number five. This one, it's a strange question in the what am I round, um, and it's a fact that I didn't know a lot about until recently. So, this one in the what am I round, I started my life floating around in the ocean. As I grew older, I attached myself to a rock, a boat, or a whale and then I stay there for the rest of my life. What am I? So I start my life floating around in the ocean. As I grow older, I cement myself to a rock, a boat or a whale, and I stay there for the rest of my life. What am I? Okay, fantastic. And the final question in the what am I round? Thumbs up if we are ready to move on. The final question, this is something that you can expect to see along the rocky shore. And I'm going to start describing it now. So, I don't breathe, I don't move, and I have a very solid surface. What am I? I don't breathe, I don't move, and I have a very solid surface. What am I? Okay, so are we ready for the answers to round one? I've already seen some great answers coming through, but we're going to go through these together. You have to be super honest because you're going to mark your own questions, but I think I can trust you, so it's, it's okay. Now, question number one was, I am 95% water, I have no brain and no blood. What am I? I am 95% water, I have no brain and no blood. What am I? Am I? So type your answers in now and we will see what people are coming up with. And the answer is a jellyfish. Yes, well done, well done, well done. So if you have a jellyfish, yes, Peter, you can have one point. Anyone else that has written jellyfish, that is one point to you as well. Well done, Sasha. Amazing work. Yes, everyone that's coming through now. Polly as well. One point to all of you guys. Well done. Okay. Next question. My eyes are on the end of my arms. What am I? My eyes are on the ends of my arms. What am I? So type your answers in now. This is one of my favourite creatures. There are hundreds of different varieties of them and it's very good to um, go and research them a little bit more. They're beautiful. I can see some correct answers coming through. Starfish, you guys are right. If you have starfish, give yourself one point. Well done, David. Well done, Sasha. Well done, Lily. Yes, everyone. Well done. A starfish is the correct answer. And these can be found along the rocky shoreline of the UK as well. They're harder to spot. I haven't seen many in my life, but they are so beautiful and and they've got eyes on the ends of their arms. How crazy is that? So well done, Eve. Well done, Sean. One point to you guys. Okay, question number three. I have up to ten legs. 
and I also have an exoskeleton. I am famous for walking sideways. What am I? I have up to 10 legs. I have an exoskeleton and I am famous for walking sideways. What am I? So for those of you that don't know, an exoskeleton is a skeleton that is outside of the body, very different to ours. Yes, everyone, if you have written crab, that is one point. So Max, well done. Maya, well done. Finn, you all have one point. Again, if you head to the SAS website after this and use some of our resources on the education pages, you will be able to find out some more facts about the crabs that you can find along the rocky shoreline. So, well done everyone. Lizzie, you all have one point. And we're going to move on to question number four. This was quite a hard one. So, I am a fish capable of living out of the water for several hours. What am I? And this is a fish that we find on the rocky shoreline. So I am a fish capable of living out of the water for several hours. What am I? So start typing your comments in now. The reason this fish can live outside of the water for several hours is because the area it lives changes so dramatically. Jasmine, yes, well done. Blenny is the correct answer. Marianne, well done. It is a Blenny, yes. So these guys, they're quite small, probably about this big and they really dart around in the rock pools, they like sort of being hidden away. So if you're ever walking up to a rock pool and you see something start to move around really fast, that is most likely a blenny hiding from the humans that are about to come and have a look at it. And yeah, they can survive out of the water. Um, they've adapted to do this because of the rise and fall of the, of the tides. Um, and it's a really cool fact. Okay, so... Question number five. I start life floating around at sea. As I grow older, I attach my head to a rock, a boat or a whale and I spend the rest of my life here. What am I? So I start life floating around at sea. As I grow older, I attach my head to a rock, a boat or a whale and I spend the rest of my life here. What am I? Amazing, I've seen some correct answers coming through. So David and Ella, you are correct, it is a barnacle. Now, the guys that have put limpets, that is a good answer, but it is a barnacle. These guys stay in the same spot on a rock for the rest of their lives, whereas limpets can actually move. A barnacle stays in the same spot and they have little doors on the top of their shell. So when the tide comes in, they can open their door up a bit like this and stick their legs out, and that is how they catch their food that is swimming past them. So everyone who's got barnacle, you guys get one point. Now, question number six. This was a very hard question, and I'm excited to see if you guys have got it. So question number six was, I don't breathe, I don't move, and I have a very solid surface. What am I? I don't breathe, I don't move, and I have a very solid surface. What am I? So this is something that you can expect to see along the rocky shoreline of the UK. I'm going to wait. Yes, Sasha, you got it. It is a rock. So it was a bit of a trick question, really. But there are lots of rocks along the rocky shoreline. Yes, Summer. Yes, Lily. You guys are doing perfect. This is amazing. One point if you have written rock. I will also, ex yes, coral reef and pebble both acceptable answers. It is a rock, a pebble, that is good. Okay, so that was the end of round number one. We've got two more rounds. The next two rounds are much shorter, and just like the other rounds that we've um, taken part in, I want you guys to write your answers on the paper, and when we come to revealing the answers together, then you can type them into the comments. Okay, so, Round number two is a rocky shore round, okay? So, the rocky shore round, and question number one is this. Animals that live on the rocky shore live in habitats that change dramatically twice every single day. For one point, can you tell me one of the things that changes? 
So animals that live on the rocky shoreline live in habitats that change twice every day. For one point, can you tell me one of the things that changes? Okay, question number two. So this is the rocky shore ride, ugh, rocky shore round. My words all got muddled then. Question number two is, what is the force that causes the tides? It's quite a tricky question, this. What is the force that causes the tides to rise and fall? Okay. Fantastic. And question number three. So, are, mo are people most likely to be cut off by the tide when it is rising or falling? So, are people most likely to be cut off by the tide when it is rising or falling? Okay, amazing. So that is actually the end of round two. It was a really short round and we're going to go straight to the answers now. So thumbs up if you're ready for the answers to start coming through. We'll start with question number one. That makes the most sense. Animals that live on the rocky shoreline live in habitats that change dramatically twice a day, every day. For one point, can you tell me one of the things that changes? So start to type your answers in now. What is the thing that changes twice a day every day. If you have put tides, then you are correct. Yes, Lily, well done, that is one point. The tide, Sasha, well done, Jasmine, well done. You guys all get one point, yes. So there are lots of things that change along the rocky shoreline every day, like the weather, um, like the temperature. But the tide is something that we know that changes twice every day. So if you have tide, you have one point. Well done. Question number two. Tides are caused by the force, which is known as what? OK, so this is more of a tricky question. What causes the tides to rise and fall? And I want to see what you guys have put down as answers. This is quite a tricky question. If you would like to go more in depth into this subject, head to the SAS website after this live lesson is finished because the resources we have on the Digital Ocean School pages will let you guys research a little bit into that. So we've got sun and moon coming up, moon, moon, amazing. The answer is the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon with the rotation of the earth. So if you guys have got the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon, that is one point. And it's a very, very hard one, that one. So well done. It's something to definitely look into more because it's fascinating to find out how connected our whole world is. A really important topic to learn about. OK, and question number three. Are people most likely to be cut off by the tide when it is rising or falling? Are people most likely to be cut off by the tide when it is rising or falling? So get your answers in now. This question is really good to know about the tides because that's a way of keeping ourselves safe. Yes, Summer, that is one point for you. It is when the tide is rising. Well done, Sasha. The answer is rising. Eve, May, you two have one point. Well done, David. That is fantastic. OK, final round. And we've only got 10 more minutes of this live stream. The final round is my favourite sort of round because it's all about food but it's not about the food that I have in the fridge. It is about the food that is eaten on the rocky shoreline of the UK. So again, we've only got three questions in this round. It's a quick round, but hopefully you guys will enjoy it. And thank you guys for being so engaged. It's awesome to see all your comments coming through. So are we ready for 
Round three, thumbs up if you are ready. Awesome, okay, cool. So the food round, question number one is, what do limpets eat? What do limpets eat? Okay, fantastic. We're going to move on to question number two. And if you guys were watching Tuesday's lesson, you should know this one, but don't worry if you weren't watching, you might already know it anyway. So question number two is dog whelks drill into the shells of limpets and mussels to eat them. So this is a dog whelk here. It's not a real one, just a drawing. But dog whelks, they drill into the shells of limpets and mussels to eat them. How many days does it take for a dog whelk to eat one mussel? How many days does it take for a dog whelk to eat just one mussel? Okay. Okay, and the final question, question three, are you guys ready? Thumbs up if you are. Final question of our Rocky Shore quiz is this. A lot of ice cream that we eat is thickened by an organism that you can find on the Rocky Shoreline. What is that organism? So a lot of ice cream that we eat is thickened by an organism found on the Rocky Shoreline. What is that organism? Okay, so we're done. I'm going to give you guys the answers to round three, our final round. Thank you guys for sticking with us for this whole quiz. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Now, the food round. So question number one, and you can type your answers in now because we can talk about these together. So question number one was, what do limpets eat? What do limpets eat? And the answer, yes, Sasha, well done, one point, it is algae. Well done, Jasmine. Yes, so limpets, we spoke about on Tuesday, they have a large tongue called a radula, which is a bit like a conveyor belt. And while they're making their way really slowly around a rock, they use this tongue to almost like lick up the algae that is, is on the surface of the rock, and that is what they eat. So lots of great answers here. You guys are doing really well. Well done, thumbs up, and let's have one point if that is your answer. Okay, question number two. So, dog whelks drill into the shells of limpets and mussels to eat them. So they drill into the top of a shell with their tongue, and they then turn the animal that's inside that shell into a bit of a soup, and they suck that animal back out again. How long does it take for a dog whelk to eat just one mussel? Five days is the correct answer. Yes, Jasmine. Yes, Lily. Yes, Peter. Do not worry. I can see a question come up. Limpets do not eat people. Nope. And nor do dog whelks. But the answer to question number two is five days. So it takes a dog whelk five days to eat a mussel. And after that period of time of them eating this animal, they are so exhausted that they actually have to hide away in a cave or a little crack and they then wait until they're hungry enough or have enough energy again to go and feed on their next bit of food. Okay, so I've got another question come through. How big are limpets? This is a really good question, actually. So they only, they do range in size. Um, the biggest limpets you would find are about this big in diameter, so only probably up to about seven centimetres, and they range in the height of their shell. So we've got a drawing of a limpet here, if you guys can see that. So they range in size and they have a pyramid shaped shell, a bit like this. Okay, question number three, I'm going off topic already. The answer to the last question of our Rocky Shore quiz is, 
So we had a lot of ice cream that we eat is thickened by an organism that we find on the rocky shoreline. What is that organism? So it was a lot of ice cream that we eat is thickened by an organism that we find on the rocky shore. And I can see some answers coming in. If you have put seaweed, you are correct. One point for seaweed. Um, so seaweed is used in a lot of products that we have in our daily lives, like toothpaste and other cosmetics, as a thickening agent. Um, and it's also a really key part of the marine ecosystem because it is a primary producer. So this means it makes its own food from the sun in a process called photosynthesis and that is key to life on earth. Um, seaweed's a fascinating organism and there's hundreds of different types across the world but also across the UK um, and something that is really worth it looking into in a little bit more detail. Okay, so thank you guys so much for taking part in the Rocky Shore quiz. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed being with you and seeing all your answers come through and it's great to have some funny ones as well. Um, if you would like to play this quiz again with your friends or with your family, we are going to be uploading it straight away to the SAS website and that is www.sas.org.uk So go to the education pages, click on Digital Ocean School and you guys can then download this, this quiz and play it again at home. You can also find all of the resources from the Rocky Shore lesson on Tuesday on the website there as well. We will be back next Tuesday for a rock pool lesson and our challenge for next week is actually going to be creating rock pool rhymes and rock pool raps. So on Tuesday I'm going to do a, a lesson where we will look at the rock pool habitats and then I'm going to be setting you the challenge of creating some rhymes and some raps and we will be presenting these live on our social media channels next Friday. If you are um, working on these things in the week, please tag us in any of your photos using the hashtag Ocean School. Um, good question. What time on Tuesday? Thank you for reminding me. Um, on Tuesday morning, I'll be live on Facebook at 11am and live on Instagram at 11.30am. And that is the same every week for the next 15 weeks. You can check out the timetable on the SAS website to see all of the topics that we have coming up. And I'm really looking forward to working with you guys. So have a nice Friday and I will see you next week.